Hello, uh, this is the uh, second lecture of the course on advanced electric drives. In the last lecture, we are discussing about the generalized theory of electric machine, in which we have a common framework for analyzing all sort of rotating electrical machines. Now, we also discussed about the Kron's primitive machine model to just to repeat that, I can I can show that once again. We have discussed already Kron's primitive machine model, which uh, was given by a scientist called Kron in early uh, 20th century. Now, if you see this particular model, the Kron primitive machine model, what we have here, we have a rotor structure and we have the stator. And in the stator, we have two different axes. One is the d axis, this is called the d axis and this is known as the quadrature axis or q axis. And we have two different windings, one set of windings in the d axis and the other set of windings in the q axis. For example, in the d axis we have our winding in the stator, this is basically the stator, the stator winding which is stationary, not rotating and this is the rotor which is rotating, this is the rotor and the rotor is rotating in the clockwise direction. So, the direction of rotation is clockwise at the speed of omega r, this is the speed of the rotor. Similarly, uh, in the in the rotor winding we have we have a winding in the rotor in the d axis and uh, in the q axis we have a stator winding and in the q axis rotor we have a rotor winding so we have shown the actual machine as a two axis machine where we have two well defined axes one in the d axis and one in the q axis the objective is this that it may be a AC machine, it may be a DC machine. The effect of a AC machine or a DC machine can be well understood or can be simulated by a two axis model. It is sufficient to have two orthogonal axis, two orthogonal axis means two axis should be perpendicular to each other. One is the D axis and other one is the Q axis. Now, please remember that this machine that we are talking about, the Kron's primitive machine is essentially a hypothetical machine it does not exist in reality, it is for, for our own understanding, for our own convenience, we have taken the help of this machine to simulate an actual machine. So, uh, in this case, we have two different axes, in the d axis, we have the stator winding and this we call to be the d s winding and we can, we can have applied voltage here and the applied voltage is V d s, d stands for the direct axis and s stands for the stator. And uh, this is my terminal marking, I, we can show this as dot and this is the current that is entering into the winding and this current is I d s. Similarly, in the rotor, I can have applied voltage and the applied voltage here is V d r and this is my dot here, these two windings are coupled, the d axis stator is coupled with the d axis rotor, this, this two are the coupled windings, the d axis stator is coupled with the d axis rotor and uh, this dot shows the positive terminal, here the current in the rotor is entering the rotor and this current is I d r. Similarly, in the q axis, I have the terminal marking here, I can show this by a triangle, a small triangle here. Similarly, I can show this by a small triangle indicating that these two terminals are similar. In the q axis, similarly, I can have applied voltage, I can have applied voltage here in the q axis 
and this voltage terminal is positive, this is negative, and I can call this voltage as VQS. And uh, the current in the Q axis winding is entering this terminal, and this current can be IQS. Similarly, in the Q axis rotor, I can have applied voltage. This voltage is plus here and minus here, and this is VQR. And this current in the rotor Q axis winding is entering the triangle terminal, and this is IQR. So, I have these two windings, these two sets of windings and they are orthogonal to each other. It means the D axis stator is not coupled with the Q axis stator. Similarly, the Q axis rotor is not coupled with the D axis stator. They are orthogonal windings. Now, in this case, what I can do here, I can write down the voltage equations. Now, when I write down the voltage equations, I can start with the D axis stator winding VDS. This winding is a stationary winding. So, I can just write down the voltage as RDS is the resistance of the winding into IDS is the current flowing through the winding plus the statically induced CMS, because a stationary winding can have a statically induced CMS and VDS is a stationary winding in the stator. Unless the winding is rotating, there is no rotationally induced CMS. So, I can just say that VDS is RDS R IDS, the resistance drop plus P psi DS, the statically induced EMF in the D axis stator. In a similar way, I can write down the Q axis voltage equation in the stator that is equal to RQS, IQS plus P psi QS and this winding is also stationary and hence there is no rotationally induced CMF. I just have a statically induced CMF in the Q axis that is P psi Q s and the psi are the flux linkages. Psi d s is a flux linkage in the D axis stator, psi Q s is a flux linkage in the Q axis stator. Coming to the rotor winding, when I write down the equation for V d r, the D axis rotor winding, I will have both statically induced TMF and rotationally induced TMF because the rotor is rotating. So, I can have a component of EMF which is coming due to the rotation of the rotor and that EMF is called the rotationally induced EMF. So, I can just write down the equation for the D axis rotor that is equal to R D R I D R is the resistance drop in the D axis rotor plus P psi D R. P psi D R, P is the derivative term that is d by d t. This is the differentiation of the flux with respect to time. P is equal to d by d t. It is a, it's a derivative operator. So, I can just write down V d r equal to R d r i q r plus P psi q r. This is a statically induced TMF and here I can, I will have a rotationally induced TMF, but I do not know its sign, but I know that the rotationally induced TMF as we have already seen in the last lecture, it is, it appears in the quadrature axis, in the orthogonal axis. So, I can just write down, it is omega r into psi q r. It means, the rotationally induced TMF in the d axis is due to the q axis flux, it is something similar to a DC machine. In the DC machine, what we have here, we have the armature, and this is our armature axis and we have the field winding here. This is the schematic diagram of a DC machine and the voltage that is appearing in the armature of a DC machine due to its rotation omega r is because of the flux in the D axis produced by the field winding. The field winding and the armature winding are orthogonal to each other in the sense that the field axis here and the armature brass axis are orthogonal to each other. And hence, the induced TMF in the Q axis rotor is due to the D axis stator. The same thing is here appearing here that the 
voltage equation in the d axis rotor will have a rotationally induced PMF due to the q axis flux. However, we will find out the polarity of the rotationally induced PMF little later. Similarly, the voltage induced in the voltage in the q axis rotor is given by R q r I q r. This has to be I d r. R q r I q r plus P psi q r. Again, I do not know the polarity of the rotationally induced PMF. So, we will have plus minus omega r psi d r. Here again, the rotational induced PMF in the q axis is appearing because of the flux in the d axis that is omega r into psi d r. All right. Now, what are the various fluxes? We have to define the various fluxes. What are this psi d s, psi q s, psi d r and psi q s. They are the flux linkages in the stator and the rotor. Now, psi d s is equal to L d s i d s plus M d into i d r. L d s is a self inductance of the d axis stator. M d is a mutual between the d axis stator and d axis rotor. Let us go back to the previous slide. Now, the self inductance of the d axis stator is L d s and the mutual between the d axis stator and d axis rotor is M d. Similarly, the self inductance of the d axis rotor is L d r and the self inductance of the q axis stator is L q s self inductance of the q axis rotor is L q r and the mutual between the q axis stator and q axis rotor is M q. So, psi q s is produced due to the current in the d axis stator and the current in the d axis rotor and hence we can write down psi d s is equal to L d s i d s plus L d m d into i d r. In a similar way, I can write down the flux linkage in the q axis stator that is L q s i q s flux in the q axis stator due to its own current and the flux in the q axis stator due to the current in the q axis rotor m q into i q r. In a similar fashion, I can write down psi d r, psi d r is equal to L d r i d r plus m d i d s and uh, psi q r is equal to L q r i q r plus m q into i q s. So, these are the flux linkages. In stator and rotor windings. So, uh, let us try to see actually we we have the voltage equation V d s, V q s, V d r and V q r and uh, what we have to find out right now is the direction of the rotationally induced PMF. Now, we have already seen that the rotationally induced PMF appear due to the rotation of the rotor and the rotationally induced PMF also appear in the quadrature axis. It means the rotationally induced PMF in the d axis rotor is produced due to the flux in the q axis rotor. Similarly, the rotationally induced PMF in the q axis rotor is produced due to, due to the flux in the d axis rotor. So, let us try to see how the rotationally induced PMF is produced and what is the direction of the rotationally induced PMF. Now, we will take the first instance the determination of the sign of 
rotationally induce EMF in the rotor. Determination of the sign of the ro rotational induced EMF in the rotor. So, if you see the rotor, let us say that initially we will take the effect of u axis flux on d axis rotor winding. So, we have the rotor winding here and what we are trying to find out the effect of q axis flux. The q axis flux is here, this is the q axis and this is linking the rotor. So, I will call this to be psi q r and I am trying to find out the effect of the q axis flux on the d axis rotor winding. Now, the rotor winding as we have already seen that although we have the rotor windings d r and q r, they are called pseudo stationary windings. They are something similar to the windings of a DC machine. So, I can replace the rotor windings by a armature winding having two brushes in the same axis. So, this is the d axis winding and this is something like a DC machine winding which are called pseudo stationary winding. So, we can we can have the conductors like this like a DC machine rotor. So, these are the conductors cross section of the conductors. So, we have the cross section of the conductors like this here and uh, the rotation as per the convention is in the clockwise direction. So, this is the direction of rotation. So, we have omega r. Now, we know that whenever a conductor is rotating, if you want to find out the direction of the induced TMF, you have to take the help of the Fleming's right hand principle. The Fleming's right hand principle says that if the thumb shows the direction of motion of the conductor, if the index finger shows the direction of the flux, then the middle finger will, will show the direction of the induced TMF. The same principle we can apply here. We have a cross section of the machine in which we have the cross section of the conductors are, are shown here and in this case, we are interested to find out what is the direction of the induced TMF. We can apply the Fleming's right hand principle. If you see, this is the direction of flux here. The flux is radially outward. As per the convention, the flux is radially outwards and uh, the thumb shows the direction of the motion of the conductors and hence the middle finger is coming out that is the direction of the induced TMF. So, I can show that the induced TMF in the upper half of the conductors will be dot. So, I can show them as dot. This is the induced TMF that I am showing coming out of the plane of the slide. Now, similarly, in the lower half or the bottom half, I can I can find out the direction of induced TMF that is cross. So, one half of the conductors are carrying dot current that coming out of the plane of the slide and the other half of the conductors are carrying cross current that the induced TMF is going into the plane of the slide. Now, let us assume that the current and the induced TMF are in phase. If you assume that if the currents and the induced TMF are in phase, it means the currents are being produced by the induced TMF. So, if you assume that, we can assume that the current are in phase with the induced TMF. So, if you assume that the currents are also in the same phase that of the induced TMF, we can find out the flux produced by the current carrying conductor in this particular structure. We can apply ampere thumb rule. You can see that the ampere thumb rule says that if the thumb shows the direction of the current, the finger encircling the thumb would show the direction of flux linkage. So, we can we can have the same principle here in the upper half of the conductors, we can have the flux linkage like this, is encircling the conductor according to ampere thumb rule. Similarly, in the bottom half, if you see in the bottom half, the thumbs will, will be the direction of the induced TMF and the current 
and the finger would show the flux linkage, the pattern of the flux linkage. So, we can show that this is the direction of the flux linkages. Okay. And the net flux linkage we can see it is coming it is in, in this direction due to the flux in the q axis we have the currents producing fluxes in the d axis in this particular fashion. Now, this is a positive flux as per the convention the flux which is radially outward is a positive flux. So, it means the rotationally induced TMF in the d axis due to the q axis flux is, is producing a positive flux. And, and a positive current. It means the rotational induced TMF is helping the applied voltage. So, we can say here that the rotational induced TMF in the d axis rotor due to Q axis flux is helping the applied voltage or the induced TMF is positive with respect to the applied voltage. So, we can we can say that if you write down the equation for the rotor, we can say that V d r, V d r is the rotor applied voltage in the d axis and we wrote the equation that it is equal to I d r R d r the resistive drop plus P psi d r is a statically induced TMF and we had a confusion about the sign. We did not know whether the sign of the rotational induced TMF would be positive or negative. As per this analysis, we have shown that the rotational induced TMF will be helping the applied voltage. Helping means it is plus omega r psi q r. It means that the sign of the applied voltage and the rotational induced TMF in the d axis are additive are in the same sign. And if you take it to the right hand side, the induced TMF, if you take it to the right hand side, what you have here is V d r is equal to I d r R d r plus P psi d r minus of omega r psi q r. So, this actually clarifies the sign that here is it has to be negative. In the right hand side, if you take a positive thing from the left hand side to right hand side, the sign changes and hence we have minus omega r into psi q r. Similarly, we can find out the effect of the d axis flux on the q axis rotor winding. Effect of d axis flux on the q axis rotor winding. We can again draw the picture of the rotor. So, we can we can show this as a rotor and here we are interested to find out the effect of the d axis flux on the q axis rotor winding. The flux is in the d axis and we can call this to be psi d r linking the rotor d axis and we have a winding in the q axis. So, the winding in the q axis can be represented by a pseudo stationary winding, which means I can have something similar to a DC machine armature winding having the two brasses in the q axis. And if you take a cross section, we are showing it in terms of a cross section. In the cross section, we can see that the conductor cross sections will be visible. So, these are the conductors and we are seeing the cross section of the conductors across the periphery of the armature. And the rotor is rotating in the clockwise direction as per the convention. So, we have the rotation is omega r, omega r is the speed of the rotor. Now, again we can apply the Fleming's right hand principle. 
applying the Fleming right hand principle, we can determine the direction of the induced TMF and the positive induced TMF will inject a positive current. So, we can we can apply the same principle here that if this is the direction of the field and this is the direction of the motion, the middle finger would be the direction of the induced TMF. So, we can do that and uh, after this we can find the direction of the induced TMF will be dot in the right half from the brushes. In the opposite half, we will see that the induced TMF direction will be cross that will be entering into the plane of the slide. And we can again assume that the induced TMF will be circulating a current and the current and the induced TMF will be in phase. If they are in phase, the induced TMF will be circulating a current and the current will give rise to a flux linkage. And the current and the flux linkage relationship can be given by Ampere thumb rule, where the left the, the thumbs show the direction of the current and the finger will show the direction of the flux linkages. So, in a similar fashion, we can, we can say that the flux linkages would be in the following fashion. So, these are the flux linkage due to the conductors in the right hand side and this would be the flux linkage due to the current carrying conductor in the left hand side and the resultant flux linkage will be in this direction. Okay? So, if you say that the resultant direction of the flux linkage, it will be downward. It will be towards the center of the circle because this is our d axis. The d axis is in this direction and the q axis is in this direction. This is our q axis. So, if I see in terms of the q axis, the flux is entering the circle, entering the center of the circle it is not outward, but it is inward. So, it is a negative flux linkage. So, we can we can conclude here that due to the rotation of the rotor, the, the rotationally induced TMF in the q axis will be producing current and flux linkage which is negative. Which it means that the q axis rotationally induced TMF due to the d axis flux is in opposition to the applied voltage. So, we can say here that the rotationally induced TMF, rotationally induced EMF in the q axis rotor due to d axis flux opposes the applied voltage or is negative with respect to the applied voltage in q axis. So, we can write down the rotor equation in the q axis once again as we have done for the d axis. We can do that. V Q R that is equal to R Q R I Q R is the resistive drop plus P psi Q R and we did not know the sign of the rotational induced TMF and as per this analysis we have seen that the rotational induced TMF is in opposition with uh, the applied voltage. So, we can say this is minus of omega R psi d R. So, if you simplify this equation, we can say that V Q R is equal to R Q R I Q R plus P psi Q R plus omega R psi d R. So, uh, we have no ambiguity right now. We have been able to find out as per the convention. We have applied the convention that we have set at the very beginning and as per the convention in the Q axis, it is plus omega r psi q r in the d axis, it is minus omega r psi d r. So, uh, we will just write down the equation. Once again, we will say that V d s is equal to R d s I d s plus P 
psi ds vqs is equal to rqs iqs plus psi qs vdr is equal to rdr idr plus psi dr minus omega r psi qr vqr is equal to rqr iqr plus this p psi qr plus omega r psi dr. So, these are the four equations that will be essential to simulate the generalized electric machine, which is a cron primitive machine, but these are in the flux linkages. We have seen that the voltage is expressed as a function of current and flux linkages. So, if we replace the flux linkage by current, we can rewrite this equation as follows. replacing the flux linkages by currents, we can say V d s equal to R d s i d s plus L d s P i d s plus M d P i d r. VQS is equal to RQS IQS plus LQS PIQS plus MQ PIQR and VDR is equal to RDR IDR plus LDR P i d r plus m d p i d s, this will be minus omega r l q r i q r minus omega r m q i q s and v q r is equal to RQR IQR plus LQR PIQR plus MQ P IQS and then we have the rotational induced TMF plus omega r l d r i d r plus omega r m d i d s. So, these four equations are quite uh, important and uh, interesting. This relates the current with the voltages. V d s, V q s, V d r and V q r are the voltages and the currents are i d s, i q s, i d r and i q r are the currents. So, from this we can we can write down this equation in, in a matrix form which will be more interesting and the equation in the matrix form you do not have to remember, you can just write down by inspection. Let us see how we write this equation in a matrix form. In the matrix form, we can write down this equation as V d s v q s, v d r and v q r. This is a vector and then we have a 4 by 4 matrix and we have to fill up the element of this matrix and this is i d s, i q s, i d r and i q r. Now, we have a 4 by 4 matrix and we have to find out the elements of this matrix and this uh, matrix can just be written by 
inspection without remembering the detailed elements, but we wrote little before. So, we can we can say here that this is the self inductance stop. So, we can have the resistance drop here R d s plus L d s p and in the stator we do not have any rotationally induced TMF and we just have a statically induced TMF and the coupling between the d axis stator and the d axis rotor will give us M d p, p is a derivative operator d by d t and this term you can put comfortably 0 without any second thought. Similarly, in the second row, we can have here R Q S plus L Q S P and then here we have the coupling between the stator and the rotor in the Q axis. So, we have M Q P here and these elements will be 0 without any second thought. Similarly, in the rotor equation, this is the d axis rotor, the third row. So, we have R d r plus L d r p and then we have the coupling here M d p, this is the statically induced TMF L d r p M d p. Then we have the rotationally induced TMF in the rotor, the rotor is rotating and due to rotation we have rotationally induced TMF and those will be coming in the coming in the cross axis. It means the Q axis flux will produce rotationally induced TMF in the d axis. So, here we have minus omega r, also minus omega r here and this is the rotor, the rotor here will have L q r and here we have M q. Similarly, in the q axis rotor we have R q r plus L q r p, the coupling term here is M q p from the stator and then we have rotational induced TMF, but it will be positive in this case is omega r L d r and here it is omega r M d. So, we have a 4 by 4 matrix relating the current and voltages that we can just write down by inspection by proper understanding without having to remember each and every element. Okay. Now, if you see this matrix, this matrix has got the resistance term, has got the inductance term, has also got has the speed term. So, we can break up this matrix into three different parts, one part containing only the resistance term, the other part containing only the inductance term with P, P is the derivative operator and the third component consisting of the speed, the speed is omega r here. So, we can we can split this into three different matrices that is equal to we can have the resistance term here R d s 0, 0, 0, 0, R q s 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, R d r 0, 0, 0, 0, R q r. So, this is the resistance term. So, uh, this matrix as I was talking that this can be broken down into a resistance matrix and an inductance matrix having P terms and a matrix associated with omega r or the speed term. So, this is the first component that is R d s, R q s, R d r i q r is a diagonal matrix and I will multiply this vector that is i and what is i vector? i vector is this vector. Okay. And then I can have the inductance matrix having P terms and this matrix is L d s P 0, M d P 0, 0, L q s P 0, M q P. Then we have M d p 0, L d r p 0, 0, M q p 0, L q r p. This again multiplied with the current vector that is i. i is a vector which has got the elements i d s, i q s, i d r, 
and IQ value. And then what is what is remaining is the matrix with the speed term. Okay. So, that we can write down in the following fashion. We can this also a 4 by 4 matrix and what we have this matrix has got the speed term. So, I can take this speed term out and the first row does not have any speed term. We can put all this equal to 0. Same as the second row, the speed terms are only appearing in the rotor. So, I have got minus m q here, this is 0, this is minus l q r and then we have m d 0, l d r 0 and then we multiply with the current vector that is i. So, uh, this is a interesting equation and this equation has got the resistance term, the inductance term having the derivative of the current and the in matrix having the omega r or the speed term. Now, if we see, if we try to see this equation once again, we can rewrite this equation as follows. The voltage equation that we are writing, the voltage vector V, which has got the components, what are, what is this V? This one is the vector V. So, this is the V vector and this matrix I can call to be the resistive matrix or the resistance matrix that is R and this matrix we can call to be this inductance matrix or L. I can take this P term out of this and the third matrix is the matrix which we can call as G. <coughs> so, we can rewrite the equation once again V is equal to R into I, this is the capital R I can write here, plus L P I plus omega R. G i. So, this uh, is again a representation of the same equation in a different form having the resistance drop and then we have the current derivative and the P d m s or omega r. Now, what I will do here, I will pre multiply this equation by i transpose. i is a column vector. So, I can transpose it and pre multiply. So, I can have this matrix here i transpose r i plus i transpose l p i plus omega r is the square quantity i transpose g and i. Now, if you see in this equation, what is the left hand side? The left hand side of, of this equation is i transpose into v. Now, i transpose into v is the power input to the system, the electrical power input to the system. Now, what is I transpose? I transpose is the left hand side of the equation is as follows. I transpose is I d s, I q s, I d r and I q r and what is V? V is V d s, V q s, V d r and V q r. Now, if you simplify this, you will have VDS IDS, this IDS is multiplied with VDS plus VQS IQS plus VDR IDR plus VQR IQR. As we know that in the Kron's primitive machine model, we have four different windings d s q s in the stator d r q r in the rotor. So, the electrical power input to the whole system is v d s i d s v q s i q s v d r i d r plus v q r i q r. So, that is basically the left hand side of the equation. What about the right hand side? Now, if you see the right hand side, the right hand side of equation has got three different terms. So, if you say the 
right hand side of this equation, I can call this to be term 1. And this is term 2. And this one is term 3. Now, what about the term 1? The term 1 is I transpose R i. Okay. Now, let us see what is I transpose R i. I transpose is I d s, I q s, I d r and I q r. What is this R? R is the diagonal matrix R d s, all elements are 0. R q s 0 0, R d r and then R q r and post multiplied by I d s, I q s, I d r and I q r. Now, if we simplify this equation, what we, we can pre multiply and post multiply this currents with the matrix and then simplify the result. I will just write down here the result of this term 1. This is the term 1 is I d s square into R d s plus I q s square R q s plus I d r square R d r plus I q r square R q r. Now, what is this? This equation represents the loss of the system, the electrical loss of the system, I square R loss of the system. So, the term 1 represents the I square R loss of the system. We have assumed that there is no core loss, there is only copper loss. So, these four uh, components I d s square R d s plus I q s square R q s plus I d r square R d r plus I q r square R q r represent the loss of the entire system. Now, what about the second term? The second term is this term. Now, if you see this particular term, we can just see what is this term 2. The term 2 is I transpose L matrix and P i. i is a vector. Now, if you see this would represent the power associated with the magnetic field. If you expand this, you will see that this term is the power associated with the magnetic field. So, uh, this is also the power and then what about the third term? Third term is I transpose G I into omega R. This is the mechanical output of the system. It is quite natural, because if you see the entire equation, what we can say here is the following that the electrical input is equal to the system loss plus the power associated with the magnetic field plus the mechanical output. So, this actually is the energy balance of the system that we are giving some electrical input to the system and some component is wasted as losses, I square R loss. Then some component is stored in the magnetic field that is associated with the self and the mutual inductance. 
and then the remaining part which is not stored is coming out of the system as a mechanical output. So, then if you want to find out the mechanical output and the torque, we have to concentrate on the third term and the third term is this term. Okay? So, we can, we can say here that the P mechanical is equal to omega r I transpose G I and then that is equal to the torque into the speed. So, we can say that that is equal to the electrical electromagnetic torque coming out of the shaft of the machine P E into omega R m, omega R m is the mechanical speed. Now, if you want to find out the torque, the torque is equal to P mech by omega R m that is equal to P by 2 into I transpose G and I. So, this is basically the torque that is coming out of the system, coming out of the system and then we have a P by 2 term here because the mechanical speed is given as the electrical speed divided by the pole pair that is P by 2. P is the number of poles and hence the electrical speed divided by the pole pair will give us the mechanical speed. And if you divide the mechanical speed here, P mechanical by omega r m, what you obtain here is the torque output that is P e that is equal to P by 2 into I transpose z into I. Okay? So, this is the expression for the torque and the expression for the torque will be beneficial for us when we go for the simulation of electric machines. The mechanical output is the torque and the torque will be leading to the speed. So, we have to know the torque output to simulate the entire machine. Okay? So, uh, here we have already seen that P e is equal to P by 2 I transpose G and I. So, this is the expression for the torque. And uh, if you want to find out the torque expression, we can we can uh, simplify this equation. And this equation has got the product of the current, the matrix G, and again the current. So we can simplify this equation P by two. And what about I transpose? I transpose is I d s, I q s, I d r, and I q r. Now, what is the G matrix? G matrix we can write here and then we have I d s, I q s, I d r and I q r. Now, we can fill up this matrix G and the matrix G as we have already seen has got these elements. These are the elements of matrix G minus M q. 0 minus L q r, M d 0, L d r 0. So, if we simplify this, we will have the expression for the torque. Okay? So, uh, we, can, we can simplify this and what we obtain here is the final expression for the torque that is equal to P by 2 into MD IDS IQR minus MQ IQS IDR plus LDR minus LQR into IDR and IQR. So, if we simplify this equation, we get the expression for the torque. Yeah, this is the expression for the torque that we have seen. Now, this torque is a very interesting component. This torque is called the reluctance torque because this component of the torque is coming out due to the variation of inductance between the d axis and q axis, LDR minus LQR. You can see this particular term. So, this is the total expression for the torque for a Crohn's primitive machine model. Now, in this two lecture that we have already 
seen that we have introduced the generalized theory of electric machine. Also, we have introduced the concept of the of the Kron primitive machine model, and we have derived the equation for the voltage and current, and also the equation for the torque. Now, as you have already said, the generalized uh, theory will help us to analyze all machines in a common framework. So, we need some example. So, we will see that how the generalized theory can be used to simulate a simple DC machine in the next lecture. In the next lecture, we will try to take a DC machine model. Using the generalized theory, we will try to simulate the DC machine.